Hey YouTube, this is Bearable IT. Today I'm going to show you how to make an approval process in Salesforce. We have a custom object I created called Delivery Commitment, and I'm going to put an approval process on it that once fully approved is going to move the proposed promise delivery date to the approved promise delivery date. Along the way it's going to keep the approval status pick list updated to reflect whatever the approval process is in. One nice thing about these processes is that it can update fields which are not editable to the users so that you have some integrity around your processes and can pass an audit. So let's go get ahead and get started here by clicking on the setup menu. In the quick find box you'll type approval and click on approval processes. And make sure that the object you're putting the approval process on is in this drop down right here. So, in my case, delivery commitment. Click create new approval process and use the standard setup wizard. Give it a name, representative of what it is. And here you can put in a filter so that you can stop bad data going from your approvers. For example, I only want proposed promise delivery dates in the future. Here you can select an automated routing based on the submitter's fields on their profile. We're not going to do that today, we're going to do one user for the entire org. And record editability. We're going to let the approver edit the record so that they can save it on the back and forth and don't have to reject it and have the submitter resubmit it. For the approval assignment email templates, this is the email template that will go to all the approvers within the approval process. It should be a pretty generic one like, your approval is being requested on this delivery commitment, here's a link to it. And if they click on that link to go to the approval, you would want to show them a certain number of fields, maybe not overwhelm them, but just the relevant ones. And I like to display the approval history and keep the recommended security. Here you can define who can and cannot submit for approval. You can keep it pretty broad and use public groups and roles, or you can be very specific and say who can do it, or maybe the record creator or owner or something like that. I'm going to add in the page layout the button to submit for approval immediately and allow my submitters to recall the request if they want. Now I'm going to create the steps that go in this approval process. In my case, I'm only going to have one step. and that's going to be one delivery commitment person. Notice the step number one, you can have multiple steps. If you do, it's going to go in sequence. So after the first person approves in their step, it goes to the second step. And you can have some criteria here that would automatically approve or reject that step, but we only have one person in this whole process, so we're not going to do any of this automated stuff. We could let the submitter choose an approver manually, but I'm going to automatically assign it to our delivery commitment person. And I want to point out one nice thing about Salesforce is the flexibility they give you within these steps. You can have multiple people and make it so that they all have to approve it before it goes to the next step or just the first person who gets to it approves it. And they can use their delegates. Here we're going to take a step back really quick and go to the actual appro approval process screen so you can see all the sections. There's five main sections. The initial submission, the final approval, the final rejection, and the recall, and the actual steps. And on all of these you can put actions that should happen. So I have already made some 
field updates that I'm going to put on each of these to keep my drop down in sync. So on each of these main ones here, I'm going to add a field update that's going to make the drop down reflect what step it's in. From here, I'm going to add one more on the final approval actions. It's going to be an email alert to the original submitter, letting them know it's been approved. And then we're going to add one more field update. That's going to be Essentially, it's going to be where we update the approved promise delivery date to equal the proposed one. So it's going to be a formula field. And we're just going to grab the proposed date. And I've got one more update on the email alert. This isn't a normal step. I just want to reroute this email to a generic email address for the sake of this demonstration. And the only thing left to do is activate this. Once again, this is a very high level demonstration. There's a lot more you can do with this. Now if I refresh my page on the delivery commitment, I can enter that approval process by submitting for approval over here. And you can see the status change to submit it automatically. And since I am the approver on the related tab, I can see the history and approve, reject, reassign, and recall. So I'm going to approve it. And once I did that, on the details page, you can see it's now approved and the date moved. And within this email address over here, I just got an email which very generically says your delivery commitment request has been approved and gave me a link to the record. So that's all I have for the approval process. I meant to keep this pretty short, high level, and just wanted to point out that it's one of Salesforce's more robust features. And if this video is helpful, please be sure to like it, comment, and subscribe, it really helps out. Thanks a lot.